Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to continue our Don't Do This series. This is number nine that we're doing. And these are photos that you send in with the room forms. And, you know, I have to tell the client, you know, what I see in those photos, the good, the bad, and the ugly, as they say. So I just thought we'd include them in, in a video so that if you're facing the same situation, you can avoid some of these issues. So the first picture that we're seeing we have, it looks like a rear channel speaker and it's in a corner, okay? It's very high up. It's very um, against the wall, as you can see. It's also got an open area behind it. All these uneven surface areas around the speaker create phase issues, meaning the energy is going to strike a wall here and not strike a wall here. That's a phase problem, okay? And it's audible. And you get enough of those going on in the room and then people call me and say, my system doesn't sound good. Well, it's death by a thousand cuts. You're doing so many wrong things in the room that when you add all those things up, you don't get good acoustics. You don't get good presentation value. You don't get definition and separation. So you got to be really, really careful here. So speaker against the wall, not, not a good situation. Okay. In this next photo, we have gear set up again in an alcove. I don't know how many times I've said this, but it's a, not a good situation. It's convenient. I get it. You have this little notched out place in your room. Your speakers and equipment will fit perfectly in there, but it couldn't be a worse position for your gear. Get your free speakers out into the room, into free space, so that they can emit the energy and uh, spread the sound across the fields that they were intended and designed for. They were never intended to be put into an alcove to make them sound like this. The speaker designer would have a heart attack if he saw those. So the bottom line here is you got to be really, really careful with setup. A lot of people choose the setup based on what's convenient for the room. And that's just the opposite approach. You have to choose the setup on what's good for your gear. Okay, what's, what's good for these speakers that you have, the size, the drivers, all of that stuff. Now you can see we have a lot of gear between the speakers at a pretty high level. You got to be really careful here with sound fields. This is our speakers. And these are our mid-range drivers. You draw a line from the bottom of the driver. And therefore your equipment should be down below that line. Okay, if it's up here, then what you're going to get is this energy bouncing off of this and coming back out at you and going this way. So you're creating what we call spurious reflections. And we don't need that. We need these two speakers working together. And they'll work together if you just set them up properly. They're designed to do that, okay? Next one, we have a similar situation. Gear too high in this alcove. Um, too much between the speakers again interfering with this sound field that we just discussed. So be real careful with your setup. In this graphic, client sent me, and uh, you can see the big tables that he wants to use. And when you have a room that's really small and you cover the floor or any surface area with a lot of hard materials, you're going to generate reflections off those surface areas that cannot be managed and they're right close to where you're working, they're right close to where the speakers are set up, they're right on top of you. You have to be very, very, very careful about that. We want to minimize the human footprint as much as we can and let the music fill the room, not the human being fill the room. Now, I get there's a balance there, and some of our balances are different than others. I have no balance. I will err on the side of the room every time, and you want me to do that. You may not agree or you may not like it. That's okay. I'm always going to defend the room because it's my job to point out to the, the things that you're not doing right to achieve your objectives. You invested all this money in gear and setup is very important. So in this graphic with all the surface area of tables, that's just a no-no. We just can't have that. In a larger room, we may be able to get away with it, but not in this smaller room. So here's some examples of things, uh, some things not to do. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll move forward for there. We'll continue this series because these are good examples I see all the time. 
And if I see them all the time, people are continually making the mistake. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.